Hey everybody and welcome to another exciting episode of GSP TV. We are now into our fourth and final part of our Get Fit series for Financial Literacy Month. And this week we're gonna be talking about children, teaching children about finances. Now we all have those situations where it comes to money where we say, well, if I'd known then what I know now today, and of course, although we can't change the mistakes we've made in the past, uh, we certainly can help our children and the young people that we influence to not make the same mistakes. I often think in life when I was growing up, had I had a mentor or somebody to teach me about budgeting or money, how different life could have been for me in my, uh, when I turned 18, was able to get credit cards and didn't understand how to budget and how to make sure that I mastered my money rather than having it master me. So this is really important that we pass on the knowledge that we learn and the wisdom that we gain to our children and to our young people so they don't make the same mistakes that we do. Um, before we dive into this week's practical teaching, I wanna share some feedback from a church member taking the Good Samaritan program financial education series in their church. And this comes from Dana and she said, I was most impacted by how budgeting is not as hard as it seems. When you start, it seems like you're working hard for it, but after you master it, it will work for you. I also like the idea of debt snowball, taking small steps to pay off debt, one creditor at a time. Hey, thanks for sharing, Dana. And if, uh, if you're out there watching today and you have any questions or feedback, we'd love to hear from you, so make sure you get in contact with us. Now, one of the questions that we had last week was, what if I'm doing all the right things? What if I'm tithing and I'm, st I'm still not getting the breakthrough and I'm not lazy, I'm not an unbelief, I'm not a poor steward, I'm not, I don't have a debt addiction. Those were the four things that we covered last week. If you didn't see last week's episode, we talked about are you tithing but still not getting the breakthrough? And we talked about how that yes, you may be tithing, but are you disobeying other parts of the Bible? Like are you lazy? Are you an unbelief? The Bible says you can't receive anything from God if it's if you're not in faith. So are you an unbelief? Are you a poor steward of your finances? And do you have a debt addiction? Um, but I guess the question is, well, what if I am a hard worker? What if I have faith? What if I am a good steward? And what if I don't have a debt addiction? I'm just, I work hard and I tithe, but I still haven't seen the breakthrough. Well, let me give you this verse. It says, Galatians 6 verse 9 says, let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. In other words, listen, God's promise is don't lose heart and be patient. Stick it out, stay in there, and if you're really feeling frustrated, go and talk to a leader or a trusted um, a successful business person or, or Christian financial advisor that you know, somebody who's living uh, the financial principles and living in the, the blessing like you want to be living in the blessing and, and turn to God and, and maybe ask God to show if there's any other reason why that you still haven't seen breakthrough yet. So don't lose heart, be patient. I know the breakthrough is going to come for you. I'm going to share some tips with you that uh, Leo Babauta wrote about in his blog and I believe they're worth talking about some of them. I'm going to put my own spin on some of these as well. So uh, one of the tips, uh, number one, is give them control of money. So if kids don't have control of money before adulthood, they learn that money will always be provided for them. So, and of course, then they don't have to be responsible for their spending or for their future. And when they finally get control of their own money, they apply those lessons by spending liberally and not worrying about the future. And of course, we don't want that to happen. So instead, we should give our children a measure, a measure of control of money. So for instance, giving your children a monthly allowance is a good idea, and it's up to you how you want to do this, but I always recommend that you tie some tasks or chores within the house um, for that, that monthly allowance. I do always believe that sh there should be always chores that children do within the house that don't necessarily get a financial remuneration because I think we need to teach children that they just need to do chores in the house just because they're part of the family. They shouldn't always be doing things just for money because I believe that that sends the wrong message as well. So a good idea is to, is to have a certain list of chores that will receive financial remuneration 
and another list of, a list of chores that they basically just do because they're part of the family and part of taking responsibility for their house is they just do these chores and there is no financial remuneration attached to these chores here. Um, now, so, so, so what you get now is you get children who get a certain amount of money each month and now you are giving them control and responsibility on how they want to spend that. So if they just want to blow it all on stuff, then they'll have no money left. But if you teach them the proper handling of money and you teach them wisdom, then they're going to learn that they're going to have to save for things, they're going to have to cut back on some areas. Eventually they'll learn how to make decisions through trial and error. It could take a while, but it's better they learn now than when they are adults. Number two is to teach them to save for money goals. Once they realize that there's more to money than just spending on whatever their latest impulse is, they'll want to buy something larger than the amount they have on hand. That's when you teach them about savings goals. So say they want to buy like an Xbox 360 standard model, which at the moment is retailing around about $200. Well, if they're getting about $40 a month in their monthly allowance, um, that's going to take them five months to save for that $200 item. Now, of course, if, there's, if they're actually not saving that entire $40 per month, maybe they're spending $20 and then they're saving $20, well, that's actually going to take them 10 months. So this is a great way to teach and give a good lesson that there is an opportunity cost with your money. In other words, if you go and spend $20 on some candy or, or something else, you're not going to be able to take that same $20 and put it towards the Xbox as well. You have to choose one or the other. Now, of course, it's good to teach them this now because when they get to be adults, quite often what happens with this opportunity cost issue is us as adults will go, hey, I went and spent $20 there. Now I don't have to spend it here, but you know what? I've got Mr. Credit Card. Let's put it on the credit card. And then, of course, that $20 isn't $20 that they have to repay. By the time interest is added, it just keeps adding up and adding up. So a great teaching point on how to teach your children how to save. Number three is teach them that reducing expenses makes goals come faster. So this goes hand in hand with number two. If you teach them about savings goals, they'll probably learn this lesson on their own. It's common sense and kids are smart enough to figure it out. If I wanna to get to a goal faster, I have to save more, which means spending less on other stuff, but it's worth reinforcing with the discussion about spending and saving and by talking to them about the decision they're making every time they spend money. So you can say, hey little Johnny, remember how you're saving up for your Xbox? Well, if you spend that money here, that's less money that you're gonna be able to put towards your Xbox and you're gonna have to wait longer before you get it. A child is really gonna get that kind of illustration. Number four, teach them how money can make money. Yes, it's true. This is a lesson on investing, and it's a lesson that many of us can learn. So here's the thing, it's one thing to save, and you might get one or 2% interest back on your savings, but if your kids are going for short-term goals, they probably won't see much of that compound interest happening. So, you know, you can either start communicating it to them as in terms of a longer term goal but even then I think it's going to take too long for them to understand the power of compound interest one of the things that you can do is you could do like a match so every dollar that they save you match it with 20 cents or 50 cents or even a dollar and then teach them about how if they invest their money just like you're matching their money uh, that they can, their money can actually make money. So you can kind of be like a bank and say for every dollar that you invest, I'm gonna give you a certain return of interest and I'm gonna put money towards it. Um, we've shared before in previous episodes how it can be a great idea to do like a 401k style match on, on car buying. I know many parents who have said to children, listen, you save a dollar and I will match that dollar with a certain amount. Some have been you know, really generous and said for every dollar you save, I'm gonna match it with a dollar up to a certain amount, up to $5,000 or up to $10,000 and we'll match that. Now obviously as a parent, you have to be careful that these uh, teaching tips don't send you broke. But I think the point is, is that you can show them that if they invest into the bank of, of daddy or the parent bank, 
and they put a dollar in there that at the end of the week, now that's worth a dollar 20 or worth a dollar 40, and they'll begin to understand that. So I think that's a re actually the best way to teach money about compound interest is by real life example and giving them incentives to save money and not spend it all. Number five is teach them about creating a budget. It doesn't have to be a complicated budget, but what you really want to teach them is how to plan their spending. The idea here is KISS. Keep it super simple. So, you know, if they get $100 in or out of every $100, you want to teach them. Well, automatically, 10 of those dollars goes to God's house, goes towards the tithes. So you put that in an envelope or a container, and then they bring that with them to church, and then they contribute that into the tithe. You then want to encourage them to at least at minimum be putting $10 or $20 aside, 10 to 20% into a savings. And I would, I would actually have two areas of savings. 10 go into a longer term savings, like a longer term thing that you want to save for, and $10 just goes into short term savings, something that you want to save up for, for, for a week or two. So the longer term savings you don't touch, they just keep adding to it, and the short term savings is just something that they save for for, um, for, for short-term purchases. And then the 70% is what they live off, is what they get to spend. Now, of course, they can always add more money to the tithe bucket or the giving bucket, to the long-term saving bucket, and to the short-term saving bucket as well, depending on what their financial goals is. But here is what you're teaching them. You're teaching them for life to live off the 70%. A lot of people, if they just lived off 70% of their income, their life would be a lot easier, there would be a lot less debt, and then they've got 20% going into savings or investments, and then they've got, of course, 10% going into their tithe. Make it simple and make it easy so they don't grow up thinking that budgets are hard and burdensome, like many of us grew up thinking. If they get into the habit now, it'll pay off huge when they grow up. Number six is teach them to pay bills. Does your teenager have a cell phone? Who pays the bill for that? Do you pay the bill for that? Well, you've got to, at some point, start to get responsibility taken on board by your children. Now, obviously, when they're really small, like four or five years old, they may not be paying their own bills, but when they get to a suitable age, you've got to start introducing the teaching of how they pay for a bill and that they take on the responsibility of starting to pay for some bills, especially when they start getting part-time jobs or after-school jobs and things like that. And not only are you giving them money for doing things around the house, but they're also earning extra money for working in different places. So give them amount in their monthly budget and allow them to pay down the bill each month. If they're late, the service may be cut off. This is a good teaching on how to learn to pay the bills on time. So if cell phone, maybe their cell phone bill is $30 or $40 per month, $20 per month, $10 per month you know, at some point you need to introduce where they actually take responsibility and pay for that bill and that comes out of their monthly allowance or the earnings that they earn from working at Starbucks or somewhere where they earn a bit, bit of extra income. And of course, if they don't pay for that bill, then that service gets cut off. And that's a great way of teaching kids how to pay their bills and to pay it on time. Number seven is to teach them about the dangers of debt. This probably isn't a lesson they can understand when they're young, maybe as you know, six years old, they're, they're gonna to be too young to understand, but I think it's very important that you either create some kind of scenario where you can show how these things work. And I think when you introduce the whole idea of a budget and how a budget works and paying bills, you can start to introduce the concept of credit and how credit is important for building your credit score, but how to use it wisely and how to put some boundaries in place to ensure that they don't exceed their credit and get themselves in a lot of trouble. I would certainly recommend if your kids are over the age or getting close to the age of 18 or over the age of 18 to begin to introduce this teaching to them so that they don't fall into the same trap that many of us have, me included, where I got a credit card and thought, yippee, there's two or $3,000 I can instantly go out and spend, and then I was literally paying off that credit card for the next 10 years it took me to pay off that $3,000 that I had you know, uh, gotten myself in debt with. So very important to empower, empower your children with the correct knowledge on debts and credit cards. Number eight is teach them that earning more money gets them closer to their goals. If you have a savings goal, you can reduce your expenses to get there faster, or you can also earn more money. 
They can start learning this lesson at a young age by earning extra money, not necessarily from their normal chores, but from extra projects that you have around the house, or maybe even your neighbors or friends need yard work or babysitting, washing people's cars, etc. Later, they can get a part-time job to help them achieve their goals uh, by earning more money. So it's a great way to show your children, listen, if you wanna get to this goal quicker, you've gotta either earn more money or you need to reduce some of the money that you are spending. And it stands true because it's a life principle as an adult, that is the way to staying out of debt and getting to your financial dreams quicker. Number nine is teach them about impulse buying. Teach them about pausing before buying and thinking before buying anything that's not completely necessary. Now here's the thing, one of the things that I do with my daughter who is three years old is a lot of times she'll ask for things. I rarely ever say no, but I rarely ever say yes. What I do say to her is, sweetie, not today, maybe another day. Because of course, maybe another day when you've saved up enough money or it's a birthday or it's Christmas, maybe another day you might be able to get that toy, but not today. What am I teaching her? I'm teaching her that money is good. We need money, money is something that we use, that we, we earn, it's something that we give, it's something that we spend, but it's also something that should not control us. We should always have control. How do we show that we have control? By being able to say, not today. And not today means we're not gonna get it today, but that doesn't mean that we're not gonna get it in the future, but for today, we're gonna say no. I believe that communicates to a child that they don't have to just buy everything if they feel the need to. And later on in life, hopefully that not today lesson will stand true for them. So I hope that you got some great things from that. I think the importance of teaching your children at a young age about money, about budgeting is crucial. Even if it's just about budgeting the $10 allowance that they get every week or every month or whatever it may be. It's important to give your children these powerful lessons. The Bible says, train a child when they're young and the way that they should go and they will not depart from it. If you will train your child in the way that they should go, I believe that they will not depart from it and they will hold true to those principles in their adult life and I think that that will empower them for an incredible debt-free, financially blessed future where they don't have to experience the burden of debt, but they can truly be empowered because they have knowledge. And we started this whole um, Financial Literacy Month and Get Fit series by talking about the scripture found in Hosea, which says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And really what we are imparting to our children is powerful knowledge, life experience, practical examples that I believe they will not be destroyed because they won't have lack of knowledge. We'll be giving them great knowledge. They'll be successful, they'll be powerful, they'll be blessed to be a blessing and they won't you know, have to go through the same mistakes and the same stupid things that we did when growing up but they'll have the wisdom to make the right and the wise decisions. Well, I hope you were blessed by this week's episode of GSP TV and that concludes our Get Fit series for our Financial Literacy Month. I pray that you'll check out all of our episodes in our Get Fit series. We talked about having uh, how to get a great credit score in uh, session one of our Get Fit series. We talked about having a, a spending plan and creating a budget in session two. In session three, we talked about why you may not be getting a financial breakthrough even though you're tithing. And we gave you some great principles there. And then of course today in session four of our Get Fit series, we talked about how to empower the next generation. So I pray you have a blessed week and we'll see you next week on GSP TV. God bless you.